Hey guys, in this particular video, I'm going to be introducing you to the concept of a free body diagram. And a free body diagram is a diagram that shows all the external forces and torques acting on an object. And to demonstrate how to draw free body diagrams, I'm going to be showing you how to do it on something called a truss. And I'm going to be doing it on this particular type of truss. All right, let me just move this truss over to the side to make some space for it. There we are. All right, now let's make this truss a little bit more interesting. Let's add some external forces to it. So let's add an external force of, let's say, 20 kilonewtons downwards, right? And, and to be a little bit more specific about where it's acting, let's create some points. Let's call this point A, B, C, D, E, and point F. Right, and let's say that point A is supported by something called a fixed support right here. And let's say that point F is supported by something we call a roller support. Right, and um, let's see if we can draw a free body diagram for this particular type of truss. Well, when we're talking about drawing a free body diagram, we typically mean replacing the supports with external forces. So let's do that. Let's, let's see if we can replace some of the supports with external forces. So first things first, we know that the 20 kilonewtons is an external force, so we know that's still going to be in the free body diagram. But we also know, we also know that the fixed support here will try and prevent movement both in the horizontal and vertical direction. So we're going to have forces in the vertical direction, and I'll call that the reaction force at point A in the y direction. And we're also going to have an external force in the horizontal direction, and it's going to be R A X, denoting the reaction force at point A in the x direction. I should really specify an axis right here, right? This is my this is what I'm calling my x axis, and this is what I'm calling my y axis. Okay, we're also going to have forces at point F as well, and what we're going to do is we're going to replace this support with an external force to trick the rest of this truss into thinking it's still supported. So we're going to have a reaction force here, it's going to be the reaction force at point F in the Y direction. Now you may be asking yourself, how do you know that the reaction force will be positively to the right? RAX is positively to the right. How do you know that? Well, I don't at this point. I don't know any of the magnitudes of these particular types of forces, and I don't know the directions either. We're gonna fit, we're gonna assume they're in one direction, calculate the answers, and and then determine based off their positive or negative sign whether they're actually in that direction. Okay. Um, I've also got a small little animation to make this a little bit clearer as well. So let's go into that. This is an animation I made um, just a few days ago. What, what it shows is um, a standard truss simply supported here and a, and a roller support just here. And we're saying that's pretty much equal to replacing the supports with forces, which I've called just there. I'll let that run over a few more times so you get it. So we've got, so we've got a truss replacing the supports with external forces. They have to be external forces. Okay, so that's what that's done. That's that's simple free body diagrams replacing supports, but it gets a little bit more complicated than that. There's something called a method of joints as well, which is really crucial to our understanding too. So to do that, let me just paste this truss again, and let me draw the external forces we've already got right here. Let's draw an external force R F Y. This is the external force due to the roller support, and we've also got an external force R A Y here and R. A X just here, and of course we've still got our 20 kilonewton force positively downwards. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out what are the forces acting on a particular joint. Well, it's not too overcomplicated. All we need to do is just imagine viewing just one part of this truss. In particular, let's just consider viewing this particular part of this truss. And the easiest way to do that is just imagine you get a chainsaw and rip out this dotted line section, which I've got right here. And if you get that and you place that part, just say over here, right? In order for this part of the truss to be tricked into thinking that it's still connected to the rest of the truss, we're going to have to apply external forces to it, right? And not only that, but we also know we also know that the external forces 
will be parallel to their members. And they'll be parallel to their members because we're assuming the entire truss is massless, which means that the only component of force along this member will be the force due to Newton's third law, which is the equal and opposite force of the rest of the truss. To make that a little bit more clear, let's draw it. So basically, at this point, we're going to trick the rest of the truss into thinking it's connected to the rest of the truss by drawing an external force. We're also going to have an external force here, right there, and we're also going to have an external force right here. I've drawn them in different colors to demonstrate that they don't have to be the same magnitude either, but they do have to be parallel to the members themselves because we're neglecting the mass of the actual truss itself. Right. Um, not only that, but this is this this is what we would consider a free body diagram for this one section of the truss. But we don't have to limit ourselves to that. We could also draw a free body diagram for the rest of this truss as well. So we can have two free body diagrams. We can have one free body diagram, which is this small joint right here. That's why it's called method of joints. But we can also draw a free body diagram for this part of the truss as well. Right. We've got this. We've got this part of the truss having an equal and opposite force. That's why if they're both in red, they're equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. We've also got, oops, I want it to be in blue. We've also got a force, a force equal and opposite um, along this member just here and this one as well. Okay, I've also got another small animation to make that a little bit more clear as well. So notice we've got a truss, we're separating one part and we're tricking the rest of the truss into thinking it's still connected by replacing it with external forces. So here we've got two free body diagrams. One is the joint and one is the rest of the truss. Typically we only focus on the joint because it'll be easier, but it, both are totally fine. I'll let that run one more time. Okay. So that's method of joints sorted, but there's one more, um, and it's called method of sections. And it's really no different to method of joints, except it doesn't limit you to just choosing one section of the truss. It limits you to choosing any section of the truss. So let me just um, make another tr small truss just here. Okay, so here we've got our truss with um, the external forces due to the supports already acting upon it. And let's see if we can apply something called method of sections. And let's do that. What we need to do is we just consider one section of the truss, hence the name. So let's consider one section of the truss. And it could be any section. But let's choose this particular section of the truss, the one which I'm cutting out right now. So it's no different to what we did before. What we're going to do is we're going to pretend we have a chainsaw and we're going to rip a part of this truss away from the rest of the truss and we're going to trick it into thinking it's still connected by drawing external forces. So let's, draw, let's do that. So this is the truss and let's draw a free body diagram. So we've ripped it off and it looks something like this now. It looks something like this now. And don't forget these pieces can be finitely sized. Um, so firstly we're going to have we're going to have an external force of this member in that direction. We're going to have an, a, a force in this direction. Don't forget, parallel to the bars in this direction. And we're also going to have a component force in that direction. Now, you may be asking yourself at this point, how do we know their intention? Like, how do you know they're pulling away from the bar? I don't at this point. I'm just, it's just general notation to assume their intention. And if it turns out that the magnitude of the force is negative, that just means they were always in compression all along. Okay, so that's one free body diagram you could draw for the left hand truss. I almost forgot to draw these external forces here RAY and RAX and 20 kilonewtons here. So this is one free body diagram. This is one free body diagram we could draw just here. But another free body diagram we can draw is just by replacing the rest of it with external forces too. So we could, we could do this for example. Let me just clean this up a bit. We could have done this. We could have created external forces right here. This would be an external force. This would be an external force. And this would be an external force. As a result, both of these sections of this truss are free body diagrams. I didn't mean to draw it in red. That seems a little bit um, cruel, but never mind. Um, I've also got a small animation which I made to make this a little bit clearer as well. So at the moment this is method of sections. We've got our truss, we've already replaced the supports with forces 
and we're separating part of the truss and drawing external forces to make up the rest of it. So notice how, notice how the forces are parallel to the bars themselves and they're equal and opposite, right? Notice that it's green to green, red to red, blue to blue, okay? I hope that makes sense, fellas. That is method of sections and method of joints sorted. In the next few problems, I'm going to be covering how to draw free body diagrams for trusses. And also, I'm going to be talking about um, how to solve um, statically determinant problems.